Hello everybody, here Matan from Tukun.io and today we're gonna learn how to implement the RC4337 standard. For this purpose, we will send user operation to the entry point contract to create a new simple account using account factory. We will also create a paymaster contract to sponsor the transactions of the simple account. And finally, we will send a transaction with a simple account to mint an NFT token. All of this we will execute on the mobile testnet. In this tutorial, we will use the repo I created in the ADAS framework, so we can easily understand which contracts we need to deploy and how to handle these contracts to enable account abstraction in our DApp. You can access the repository through the link I attached below. Before we get started, remember, this is just a demo, and there are many issues you will want to consider before you implement this approach, such as guard estimation, smart contract security, upgradability, and many other issues, so be careful and make sure you get it right before you use it for production. Now, let's dive to the code. First, I install the dependencies. Here I have the .env file, which contains mobile testnet RPC provider. You can import this from Alchemy, Infora, QuickNode, or any RPC provider you choose. In addition, the file should include the private key of an EOA wallet that has enough matic to deploy all the contracts that we need. Include the paymaster contract that will sponsor the simple account we will create. For the simplicity, in this example, we are not going to use the bundler. The bundler initiates transactions by allowing user to sign off-chain transactions, which the bundler submits to the blockchain for them. This process allows gasless transactions for the users and improves the user experience by removing the need for the users to manage or even own cryptocurrency for gas fees. Since in this example we are not going to use the bundler, we will need to deposit funds for a EOA wallet so that it can initialize the transaction. Let's take a brief look at the package.json file. I imported here the Eat Infinitism library called Account Abstraction. We will also use the Eaters and the Web3 libraries and the Open Zeppelin contract library, so I also imported them. Now, to understand what is happening in this repo, Let's go to the address config file. This file is automatically updated. It should contain all the addresses that will be deployed until the end of the process. We export the addresses to the scripts where they are needed, so we won't have to do it ourselves. I don't want to waste time on the added config file. Just remember you can go there and change the blockchain network to any EVM based network you want. Let's start with the entry point deployment script. You can see that, in line number 7, we deploy the entry point contract. Then, we print the address of the deployed contract, and finally, in line 15, we update the addresses config file. We will have to pass the entry point address as a parameter to the account factory and the paymaster contracts. I simply imported the entry point contract as it is from the account abstraction library. This allows us to compile an artifact so we can use it to deploy the contract. The entry point is a singleton contract that acts as a central entity for all ERC-4337 smart accounts and paymasters. It coordinates the verification and execution of a user operation. So let's deploy a contract. You can find the deployment commands in the readme file. We can see that the entry point address is automatically updated in the addresses config file. Once we have that, we can go to deploy the account factory contract. This is the deployment script of the account factory. We import the entry point address here to pass it to the constructor of the account factory contract. But before we run the script, let's look at this contract. We will call the create account function and pass into it two parameters. The first parameter will be a new EOA wallet that we will create later. This wallet will be used as the owner of the simple account inside the transaction that the simple account will execute. The second parameter is the salt. A salt is a sequential number that ensures each new account created as a unique address. I made a little change to this contract and I added mapping it to it. It's take the red variable that represents the simple account address and store a boolean value for it to verify that the simple account address has been initialized by this factory. I do this so we can later demonstrate simply how to allow the paymaster contract to verify whether the simple account was created by the specific account factory. The account factory use create2 opcode. 
This is because in this standard, the component that should initialize the transaction is the bundler. And for this purpose, the bundler needs to create a simulation of the transaction before the submission to the network. The bundler do this to estimate the price of the transaction gas fees. Accordingly, it binds the paymaster contract that pays of the transaction fees. This is the reason this contract just create two opcode. Now let's deploy the account factory. And once we have that, we can go to deploy the paymaster contract. This time, we will pass the addresses of the entry point in the account factory to the constructor of the paymaster. Let's jump to the paymaster contract and see it. The paymaster contract I created inherits from the base paymaster contract proposed in the ERC4037 standard. The base paymaster is an abstract contract. And in order to use it, we need to implement the function validate paymaster user op. In the body of the function, we can add all the requirements that we want to define for the sponsoring the transaction of the simple account. As I mentioned before, the only requirement that I added is that a simple account is created using the account factory that was passed as a parameter to the paymaster contract. You can edit the requirements you want for sponsoring the transactions, such as maximum amount of gas that the paymaster is willing to pay, or a limit on the number of transactions that the paymaster is agreed to sponsor for each simple account. In this contract, I added a requirement in line 21 that the value loaded for the simple account in the account factory mapping is equal to true. So it can be verified that only simple account created using the specific account factory can receive sponsorship for transactions. Now, let's deploy our paymaster. Once we have that, we can move forward to create a simple account. First, we must create an EOA wallet that will sign the transactions of the simple account. To do this, I use the Ethers library and created a function called createEOA, which returns the private key and the public key of the created EOA wallet. Later, we will use the private key to sign the transaction that will be sent by the simple account. In production, you probably wouldn't want to do it this way, and maybe use a service like MagicLink or Wallet Paper that will create EOA wallet for a new users. But to make everything clear in this example, we will create the EOA wallet ourselves. As soon as we have the user's public key, we can continue to compute the address of the simple account. This is done by the getSender address function from the entry point contract. The getSender address receives the init code parameter. The first 20 characters of the init code is actually the address of the account factory contract, and the rest of the bytecode contains the create account function call data. As we mentioned earlier, the call data for the function is the public key of the EOA wallet and the salt which is an arbitrary number that is used to deploy the simple account contract deterministically to a specific address. The call to this function will always gonna revert, but we can catch the data and get from there the computed address of the simple account contract. Now, let's jump to look at the simple account contract. I didn't make any changes in this contract either. In the simple account contract, we will use the execute function that get three arguments. The first argument will be the destination address of the NFT contract that we are about to create. In the second parameter, you can pass funds to the target contract. But since the safe mint function we will create will allow free minting, we will send a zero value to this field. The third parameter is the call data for the function in the target contract. And all we have to do is to encode the function data. We will see this when and we send the user operation. So let's go and run the get sender other script and make sure it happens. Now let's go deploy an NFT contract for our example. This is a super simple NFT contract. I implemented here the safe mint function. A call to this function will transfer a token to the message sender, which in our example will be the simple account. In addition, I implemented the token URI function so we can later see the token in OpenSea platform. Let's go ahead and deploy the NFT contract. Now, all we have left is to send funds to the paymaster contract so the paymaster will be able to pay the transactions of the simple account. Since we are not using a bundler, we will send funds to the EOA wallet that we created so that it will be able to submit a transaction to the network. 
the funds will be sent from the wallet that will define the .env file. We will run the deposit found script and wait for the deposit successful message. Now, we can finally send user operation to create the simple account. And also, in the same transaction, we will call the SafeMin function in the NFT contract we created. In lines 3 to 9, we import all the addresses we have created so far. In lines 13 and 14, we configure the AOA wallet so that it signs the user opash and confirms the execution of the transaction. Immediately after that, we define the instances of the contracts that we use in this script. Then, in line 24, we create a variable named func target data, which represents the encode call data for the safe mint function in the NFT contract. So we will be able to access the instance of the simple account contract and create a variable that represents the call data for the values that the execute function receives. As we mentioned earlier, the values are a target contract, which in our case is the address of the NFT contract, a value that equal to zero, and the call data for the safe mean function. We will pass the data variable to the user obstruct. Before we do this, we will create a variable that contains the byte code with the initialization data for the simple account. As we said before, the byte code is built from the account factory address and the call data for the create account function, which are the public key of the AOA wallet and the salt. In line 30, I created a variable that represents the byte codes of the simple account. And since this contract has not yet been created, its bytes code will be equal to 0x. As soon as we send our first user operation, we will create the first simple account and its byte codes will consist of 0x and many hexadecimal digits. Then, the following condition will be activated. The byte codes of the simple account will not be equal to 0x. So we will set the init code to 0x. And since the init code will be equal to 0x, we will not create an account again in the next user op that we will send. This way, we will be able to repeatedly send mint operation to the NFT contract. This is the struct of the user operation as proposed in the ERC-4237 standard. In the field of the sender, we will pass the address we computed for the simple account. After that come the nonce, which we can get using the entry points get nonce function. The function will receive the simple account address and an arbitrary number as the parameters, and then the function will return the correct nonce for us. After that, we will pass the init code to the user obstruct to create a simple account. The next field will be call data, where we will pass the data object we created that contains the call data of the execute function in the simple account contract. The following five fields handle the gas restrictions of the transaction. You can get information about them in the interface folder of this standard in the user operation.sol file. To get the max priority fee per gas, I created a function that checks in the last 20 blocks what the max priority fee per gas value is and returns the average value. In the paymaster and data field, we will pass the address of the paymaster contract. It is possible to pass additional call data to the paymaster contract, but in our case, we will only pass the contract address. The last field refers to the signature of the private key on the hash that created by passing the user op object to the entry points get user op hash function. In line 54 we sign the hash. We receive an updated signature field in the user op object. In line 57 we pass the user operation object and the beneficiary to the endl ops function. The beneficiary should receive the payment refunds for the submitting the transaction to the network. In the classic case, this would be a bundler, but in our case, it's the address of the EOA wallet. Now we are finally allowed to send a transaction. Just before we do this, let's look at the test.js file. In this script, we will check whether when sends user operation, the number of the token ID does increase by 1, and if the token balance of the simple account also increased by 1. Since the NFT contract has not yet been used, when we run the test now, it should to print to the terminal the number 0 for the token ID and the number 0 for the simple account balance. Now let's send the user operation using the send user op.js script. It looks like the transaction was successfully sent. Now let's run the test script. Everything seems fine. We will run the send user op script again, and this time it should not create a wallet and only send the call data to the NFT contract to mint another NFT. It looks like it worked. Let's run the test again. 
Now let's go to the testnet.openc website and we will see the simple account associated tokens. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.